Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't done so already, hit that like button, please, and do subscribe if you're new for more content like this. WTA Power Rankings Edition number one. Why is it edition number one, not number two? And the reason why is because a lot of the big players weren't really playing in tournaments until uh, the past week. So I thought, look, let's hold off one week and we can give ourselves a better opportunity to do some power rankings. Now, the women's power rankings is going to be in my opinion, a lot harder to do than the men's because, well, there's two reasons, really. The first reason being that a lot of the players haven't really played on grass that much anyways, and they haven't had a lot of experience on it, and it's just so open, generally, the tour on the women's side. And secondly, I just think there's so many different fluctuations in form, and just because someone's performing uh, well at the moment doesn't necessarily mean they're going to perform well in the Grand Slams. And I guess that's a good indicator normally is the tournaments beforehand, but it's not always the case. Like, for example, on the Jabur, playing so well on the clay, then went to Roland Garros, lost in the first round. I don't think she'll do the same at Wimbledon. I actually think she's more comfortable on the grass than even the clay. Uh, she's an all-court player, but she had a pretty good run last year at Wimbledon, so we'll see how she gets on. But yeah, so it's going to be intriguing to see how we get on. I'll bring up the well, my power rankings, and we'll work through it. Uh, she made the quarterfinals, of course, last year on the Jabur as well, so interesting. Right, let's go into then our number one. So number one has to be Igor Sviontek. I mean, I've already put her there because I just think it's obvious, right? She's the one number one. She's barely lost any matches this year, hasn't lost a single WTA 1,000 match. So that's a Masters match, hasn't, won a, hasn't lost, sorry, even a single match. Uh, so she's won every single WTA 1,000 Masters tournament she's entered. She won Roland Garros in the semifinals of Australia. I mean, <clears throat> she is a huge favorite going into it, no doubt. Now, of course, we have to remember that there's going to be no Russian or Belarusian players. So, for example, someone like a Sabalenka, who made the semifinals, she won't be able to compete, which is a massive shame. Someone like a Kasakina, obviously, as well. She's been in some pretty good form as of late, and she won't be uh, she won't be able, sorry, even to compete either. So, yeah, some some caveats there, of course, when I do my kind of top 10, I'm not going to include them because they just can't compete. So, uh, unfortunately, they won't be able to get included in the power rankings. So, Shriantek at number one is, is a pretty obvious one to me. Now, there were a couple of very interesting tournaments going on, and I guess the most high-profile one was the Birmingham Classic, and that was the one where Ons Jabur actually ended up winning. And, sorry, not Birmingham Classic. That was uh, where Haddad Meyer won, actually. So that wasn't the Ons Jabur one. And Haddad Meyer, by the way, we'll talk about her, because she is in fantastic form. Like, ridiculously good form. Sorry, in Berlin, of course, uh, Jabur was playing Bencic, Coco Goff, Sasnovich, Parks, Makova. I mean, some great players, uh, some really, really good players uh, on show. So, looking forward to that. So, I think we need to go through, kind of, you know, and have a think about who's been good on the grass, who is good on the grass. Now, for me, number two, and I'm not doing it because I like her, I'm doing it because I think it's... For me, anyway, it makes the most sense. And I think it most likely should be Andre Jabur. Now, I'll give you my reasoning. She made the quarterfinals, right, of Wimbledon last year. She then has just beaten Bencic, 6-3, 2-1, walkover, fine, of Switzerland in the final of Berlin. She won against Goff, beat her straight sets in the semifinal. Sasnovich beat her three, Parks in straights, Makova in straights. That's the first tournament she's had since the French Open. She's playing Eastbourne tomorrow, or today even. Uh, let's see how she gets on there. But I genuinely think she... And there's a massive gap, by the way, between Iga Sviontek and the rest of the field. But I think for me, she is probably the player to be at number two. Like, she warrants being at number two. I don't know what you guys think. I mean... Pliskova lost to Coco Goff in the quarterfinals. She was, of course, the finalist last year at Wimbledon. She lost Coco Goff, but she did beat Kanepi and Andrescu. Double bageled Kanepi as well, by the way, which is incredible. Uh, so she'll be in, she'll feature somewhat in here. I think Jabur has to be number two for me. That's kind of how I see it. And number three is an interesting one. It could go, there's so many different players we could give this to. Coco Goff has just made the final of the French Open. She also just made the semifinals 
of Berlin. And last year, of course, um, well, not last year, but generally, Coco Goff has, of course, made her name at Wimbledon, winning against Venus Williams when she was 15, which is how she kind of really made a name for herself. She made the round of 16 last year, lost to Angelique Kerber. <clears throat> what are we thinking in terms of, I guess, who should be at number three? Coco Goff's one, it could be Ben Chich, another Sakari has been in some good form as well recently. Uh, of course, losing the semis, though, to Benchich. I'm going to go with Coco Goff, actually. And I don't, and it's a tough one, but I think given that she played at the French Open, she made the final, which is a massive, massive, massive achievement. Uh, since then, she hasn't really played much apart from. Uh, that that tournament in Berlin, if I'm not mistaken. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. <clears throat> Lost in the semis to Jabir, the eventual winner. She beat Pliskova, Wang, and Lee. I mean, that's a, that's a good run. And all in straight sets as well. So for me, you know, she definitely deserves that number three spot. She's in very good form. Number four can be Benchich. I think Benchich made the final of Berlin. And she's a player that I feel could have success on the grass. She has the ground show. She has a serve. I think probably not the best at the net. I know she's a good doubles player, though, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're a good uh, volleyer at the net, to be fair, in a singles capacity. Made the quarterfinals of Hertig and Bosch. Lost to Kodematova. That would have been, you know, disappointing. But I, I just have a feeling that Belinda Bencic has something to say at Wimbledon this year. I don't know how far she will go. We shall see. I mean, she only lost in the first round last year. So that was a massive, massive, massive upset personally. But let's see. Let's see. She's my number four. Number five, I think, has to be a Pliskova. And I'll tell you why. Because she made the final last year. So she has credits. And uh, she's made a little bit of a run this year as well at, at Berlin. Um, I think you have to say that, look, she made the final. So that means something considering the finalist the other finalist the person who won it in ash Barty is not even here this year she's retired of course so she won't be playing uh, anytime soon so Pliskova will be happy about that that's for sure um but yeah i mean <clears throat> and her run as well last year being sabalenka Galu i mean to be fair up until the semi-final she didn't, ha she didn't have to play a single seed she had a pretty easy run, I have to say. Um, but took a set of Barty as well, a tie break. I mean, she's not a bad player, Pliskova. Very hot and cold, but she's capable. Uh, so I think she warrants a place at number five. Number six, I'm going to go with the most informed player, which is Hadania. And I think she has won back to back grass tournaments. She is probably the most informed player right now. If we're talking about the last few weeks. On tour, uh, she just won Birmingham. She beat Zhang, Halep, Georgi, Freck, and Kvitova. What? That's really, really impressive. Nottingham. She also won. She beat Risk, Martinkova, Sakari, Miyazaki, and Wang. <clears throat> I mean, that is great. That is phenomenal from the Brazilian player. Great to see her playing some good tennis as well. So she's my number six. And rightly so, I think. Number seven is an interesting one. Now, you could go with someone like a Simona Halep. You could go with someone like a Sakari. Uh, there's lots of different options. I mean, Halep, of course, made the semifinals, as I just said, of that Birmingham class. So she hasn't played in the other grass court tournaments. She is, you know... She's a good player, let's say, right? I mean, the fact that she has managed to win two Grand Slams in her time, win more than in 2019, that wasn't too long ago... She has a decent chance, right, of at least going relatively deep. So I'm going to go with Simona Halep at seven. And I think she warrants that place. Um, I'm not necessarily the most... Um, I don't know. I'm not the most... Uh, I don't, am I the most... I don't know. Ah. 
Hmm, interesting. Am I the most biased person or silliest person to have Halep at seven? I don't know. I don't know. So let's talk about the rest. Then. So Halep at number seven. Number eight. Let's talk about the rest. Let's talk about the rest. Bedosa. Now, Bedosa hasn't had any grass court like exposure whatsoever this year. She hasn't. She's not played any tournaments in India. She's going to be playing this week, so let's see how she gets on. But she'll be playing in uh, Eastbourne. So I'm interested to know how she gets on. In terms of her, I guess, how she played last year, she made the round of 16. I think she's got the game to be good at Wimbledon. She's going to have a better seeding as well. Last year, she lost to Makova, who was seeded better than her at the time. I mean, surely, surely she'll do better this year. She's got a big serve, big forehand. <coughs> Bless me. Uh, good backhand on the line as well. She's got power. It's a surface that's quick. Come on, Bedosa at number eight. Number nine, I'm going to go to Kari. She had some pretty good form this year so far in terms of uh, her grass court stuff as well. Of course, in Berlin, made a semifinals, lost to Bencic. And uh, yeah, at Wimbledon, you know, last year, I think made the second round, not great, big upset, but she should be there or thereabouts to at least kind of make it a second week, making some type of run. Number 10 is an interesting one. I don't know who we go with now. We, I could potentially go with someone that is tried and tested, and I think I might have to. And uh, I'll let you in on a secret. It's a German player. Someone who <coughs> oh, bless me. has won with them before. Someone who I think will be dangerous. We had a semifinals last year. I beat Coco Goff in the round of 16 last year as well. She's a dangerous player. And I have a feeling she's going to go, again, relatively deep. And it's Angelique Kerber at number 10. That's my 10. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Of course, some people missing out, like a, a Contevit. To be fair, a lot of people might think, oh, maybe she should be in there. She is, after all, the number two player in the world, I guess. But still, don't think she should be in there. And then other players, I don't know. <clears throat> There's not really too many to to look upon, really, to be honest with you. But we'll see. Let me know your thoughts. Maybe you disagree. Let me know who's in your top 10, who's your number one, who's your one to 10. Do you agree with the order? Maybe you don't. Let me know. Um, of course, we'll do a, another version as well before we want to start. Uh, before you go anywhere, though, do remember as well to leave a like. So hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. And if you're a podcast listener or watcher, leave a rating, review, uh, subscribe. Follow us, all that good stuff. Thank you very much, guys. Stay safe and well, and we'll see you in the next week.